Thank you for coming today to celebrate Bert Fisher's life. I had a chance uh, to meet him a couple of times along the way. So this service today is a bit special because I, I knew Bert a little bit. But you don't know the measure of a man until he sit with family. And so at Susan and Paul's place, we talk. Documents were pulled. We went historically through the greatness of this man's life as it applies to human history. The date, 1932, July 27th, is significant for where Bert and family lived. They were in the Sudetenland, an area carved out of Germany and then was replaced by a bit of Czechoslovakia. The First World War and its conflict left a lot of things unresolved, including borders. The correction tried to come through the annexation of certain areas by Adolf Hitler in Germany. The Sudetenland was one of those places. And that's the context in which Bert and family are found. I'm not sure, Susan, if you'll mention it, but you mentioned to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but his father, Bert's father, was actually SEC, a British Secret Service, where if you were caught, you and your family were killed. It is from greatness that this man comes. And it is greatness that he applied to everything that he did. If you didn't have a chance to see the papers just sitting on the table photocopied, take a look. It is a history book, his life. Must not be forgotten by great-grandchildren like Brooklyn and others. Have to have this. Must maintain the importance of this man and the legacy that is a generation and a generation and a generation to follow. What we do here today is we say goodbye, we bless him on his way, we remember, honor, and celebrate his goodness. Thanks, Conrad, for what you gave me. It's really cool. Susan's going to come and share. The DVD presentation will be on a loop in the reception. So that, that's a conversation piece for you that gather for a sandwich or a coffee. And the last kind of people that I saw hugging mom were P. Lee. Leaping, sorry, my apologies. I was overhearing the name. They're neighbors, old school neighbors. And when mom recognized them, there was joy found on her face. Because the last movements of this man's life and mom are not relatable really to where they're at in a retirement community. We have to go back to when they were neighbors. We have to go back when they were young. We have to see all these moments, which will be on the DVD presentation, and then speak of some of them. Because this last moment is not his best moment, although it is the one that we honor today. He was once a strappingly handsome, capable, adventurous man who raised his boys right, gave his daughter every opportunity to be a blessing. Yeah, that's what we do here today. Honor, celebrate, remember. And we ask God just for his blessing upon us. Not that I think you have to pray to get it. But that we're asking for that plus peace and comfort. It's a difficult day. And I want to thank each and every one of you for coming. For giving this family the knowledge of not only your presence, but the presence of all those that came into dad's life along the way. I can't sweep them all together. There has been loss attached to those that Bert knew, but those that gathered today, thank you. Thank you for being with us. If you'd bow your hearts and heads, let's pray. Father, thank you for this man who was not just capable, but in fact brilliant when it came to the things that he did well. Thank you for all the skills that he had, the lessons that he taught, the love that was given. Thank you for his positive spirit. 
and the fact that he was always joyfully participating and then joyfully watching his family grow. We ask you to bless him on the other side. Thank you that he's with family. And for family left on this side, we ask for your peace, your comfort upon them. Bless us this day, we pray. Amen. Thanks to Valley View as well, right? When a person dies, there is caretaking involved. A staff that works tirelessly behind the scenes to make sure that everything is good. Every T is crossed, every I is dotted. So that when we get to this day, the right bouquet is on top of the casket. Dad looks good, those that viewed. All these things are part of our celebration. And yet with technology, we get to say hi to those that aren't with us. Different time, different time zone, different place, but yet family or friends. To them we say hello, thank you for joining us through this technology. But since the beginning of mankind and its history, loss has always been a part of life. The last great chapter gets written today. And in some way, an image is cast so that family can remember. Beautiful photograph, mom and dad back in the day. And then we celebrate and we honor and we applaud the things that this man did. I wrote down and circled a quote from one of you two, I wasn't sure which, but you said, he was such a good man, and he was. He had the cleanest restaurant in town. There was a picture, and you'll probably see it, of the Daisy Dip. Now, what town is that? Was that in Winnipeg? Yeah. So his restaurant in Winnipeg, the Daisy Dip, is like kind of a Dairy Queen. But the um, food inspectors would hang out there because they knew it was the cleanest, right? There was a standard set, and they knew that that's where they would eat because they had been in the back and they had seen how well that restaurant was taken care of. He apprenticed as, as a baker back in the day. Dude was capable. And there's pictures of his house and they would ski to school sometimes. And I mean, idyllic, except for this looming presence of war coming. Must have been Last thing you kind of thought about before bed, maybe the first thing that you heard when the news was coming in, that war was maybe coming. And yet to survive it and then thrive after it is an amazing accomplishment of this generation. They knew what war was. They knew what peace was. They knew the vast void between those two. And I am thankful that my boys have not had a fight in any conflict. But it makes them, I think, lesser by a, by a degree for not knowing what it means to have your freedom the way that your dad would have known to have had it. And so we have to blend yourself, myself, others of my age, boys, Conrad, Rick. We have to somehow gain a sense of the goodness that was found here in order to promote peace at all costs. This man knew what it was. Drove school bus, worked Winnipeg Free Press. I know Susan, you're going to come in. You know, capable. If you said, Bert, can you work a woman's clothing department? Yeah, I could probably. You know, he would. He was capable. He could do it. He'd study. No Google. You know, how do you drive a bus? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you just, you know. I'm sure he had a couple of bumps, but he knew. And in scripture, it says, I know there's nothing better for men and women than to be happy and to do good while they live, that everyone may eat, drink, find satisfaction in all their work and toil. This is a gift from God. What a gift he was. Whether it's the daisy dip or the school bus or uh, distribution with Pacific Press, whatever he did, he did well. And when he did it well, it was deep satisfaction. He fought for life as long as he could. 
the many fought for peace, to go peacefully into that night to be with Grandma. What a welcome he must have received. And I long someday to live a life well enough that when I pass, my family will be able to say that Dad gave and that I would be received by family as warmly as Bert did. We come today to celebrate him. Susan's going to come and she's going to share with us her eulogy and I apologize for stepping on any of your good stuff. Then I'm going to represent the boys and then Reef's going to come and share a few things with us. For those that are coming today to share, thank you. Blessings. My dad, my dad was the kindest man that I know. I can never recall him ever raising his voice in anger. He lived through some of the hardest times in history, but he was optimistic and cheerful. He witnessed cruelty that no one should see, least of all a child. But he always saw the best in people, and he treated people with compassion. He suffered so much loss in his own early years, but instead of being bitter, he embraced his family and his friends, and he loved people unconditionally. He was friendly, enthusiastic, and he was always there to help. He built fences, he built sheds, he taught his kids and his grandchildren how to ride a bike, how to drive a boat, how to fish, how to water ski. My dad was always there for us. He could fix anything, especially with his dear friend Art by his side. He fixed and maintained our cars, snowmobiles, even in the coldest of the Manitoba winters. We drove them, he fixed them. <laughs> he happily and patiently passed all of those skills on to anyone who was willing to learn. Thanks to my dad, and to my Uncle Art, I still have a pretty good understanding of how a car runs and how to troubleshoot a problem. When he taught me to drive, he insisted that I know how to change a tire because women should not be helpless. He valued determination and strength. My dad was so smart. Despite his lack of a formal education, he loved reading, especially biographies, and history. He lived through historic times and he wanted to understand how and why those awful events happened. I spent a lot of time with my parents after they went into Westminster House, which was just a, a wonderful place for them to be. And I thank the staff and the residents there for being their second family. They were there for a little bit more than a year and I'm not sure if it was just that quiet, reflective time of his life that made him reminisce, or if it's because I made more time to listen to him, because I think we both knew that his time was coming to an end. Much to his surprise, I found boxes of photos and documents from his childhood. He told me who those people were and our family connection to them. He even wrote out a family tree. I'm so grateful now because we have names attached to those faces and we can pass that history on. Dad was honest, trustworthy, boy could he keep a secret. He finally shared stories of his past that he had never discussed before. He told me things that his father made him swear to never reveal when my dad was eight years old. He felt a little guilty telling even after 80 years but he knew that his family story needed to be passed on, and he is the last of his generation. Watching the Russia-Ukrainian war brought back some deep and painful memories for him. He was noticeably upset on one of my visits. I suggested that he just stop watching for a while. He turned the TV off and said, you just never forget the sound of a tank rolling through your village. Thanks to people of my dad, like my dad and that generation, 
None of us have had to experience that horror. Our entire family spent this Christmas Eve together. Only Sarah and Phil were unable to come from Wales, but they had a Skype visit with him that afternoon, the next best thing. When my parents left, I helped Dad put his coat on, and I told him that I'd bring his gifts over soon. In typical dad fashion, he said, don't worry. The day spent with his family was the best gift that he could ever have. I think we all feel the same. His spirit was strong. He never complained. He had a small fall just a few days before he passed. He may have fractured his spine. He and my mom went down for lunch, just as usual. When the care staff offered to take him back to his room in a wheelchair, he insisted on walking because he needed to stay strong. His mind was sharp until the end. I had a very long talk with him the day he passed. I offered to come for a visit, but he told me to come on Friday with Paul instead. He admitted to being a little sore and tired. He told me that he was so proud of his family. He knew that we would always be here to take care of each other. I told him I loved him, but he already knew that. He passed peacefully late that night. His kind heart was just too tired to keep beating. But he left us the way he lived, with dignity and with grace. We are so grateful that he stayed with us for as long as he could. He will be missed so much by all of us who knew him. I'm so proud he was my dad. Thank you all for coming. It means so much to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Well done. Conrad gave me two pieces to read. First piece starts, when we were young, Rick and I always had motorcycles, snowmobiles, even boats. The unwritten rule was that we also had to maintain and repair them. Dad taught us how to do that, as well as teaching us home and car repair. Uh, we helped build multiple fences, fixed basements. And I remember some repairs were frusta frustrating and done in a very cold garage. When a bolt wouldn't get loosened and then got rounded, finally snapped off, I would think, well, that's it. Nothing more can be done. But Dad would just think for a moment and say one of his famous sayings, well, we can't send it back to the factory. And then we went into plan B. The bolt would have to be drilled out, and it was tedious work. Drilling and using easy outs to remove that bolt, it would get done no matter what. Giving up was never an option. And we learned a lot of things from him. And we still do most of our own repairs. My son Kyle was just a young lad and would come to me to fix or build his toys and I would show him how to do that as my dad did for me. And he once said, you're the fixer. And so I said, well, then what is mom? And he quickly said, well, she's the finder, <laughs> but you're the fixer. We traveled to many places with our parents and always had a great time. We spent years at our trailers at Harrison with many fond memories. He was always there for us. And we will miss our family fixer, the person who always had a solution to any problem that came up. Love, Conrad and Rick. It's valuable. And it was generational. Dad to the boys, the boys to Kyle and others, right? Well done. The second piece follows the first. I remember a time, it was Dad's 70th birthday, at least Conrad sure it was. It was after dinner, it was a warm summer night. We were standing by my camper door at my father, or at my trailer at Harrison with an amber porch trailer light on. Mom and Dad loved going to the trailer at Harrison and we played a lot of cards and the kids loved going to their place for Mickey Mouse pancake breakfasts. 
I already had a scotch, maybe two, and I remember <coughs> asking Dad if he wanted a scotch. We did enjoy a scotch or two over the years, and, and he said, no, thanks. Then af after several seconds, he said, ah, why not? So I poured him a drink. We went back to our vantage point. We were simply watching the evening unfold with his grandkids having fun with Grandma. And he said, I never thought that I would have seen this. He had that look of being so very content and very proud of his family along with the big smile on his face. I now totally understand that comment and moment. When we were at Susan's for Christmas dinner, he seemed to be soaking everything in. He had that same content look. And I went beside him after dinner and saw what he saw, our family enjoying the evening. And he was truly proud to be surrounded by his family just days before his passing, overjoyed with seeing everyone at the family gathering. And yes, that was his Christmas gift. I think he fought hard to make it to Christmas to be with his family and to give us all some last happy memories. His mind was sharp, but his body was getting weary. And that is totally him, giving you right to the end. So be happy, not sad. Dad would prefer that. He had a full life. I love you, Dad. Conrad. Yeah. There are times when we just find that moment of deep contentment to be witness to it special. Because, yeah, Dad would have had no greater gift this Christmas than just to have family with him. It allows us to pass peacefully. Really, it does. To have that moment just days before and then go into eternity knowing how deeply satisfied he was. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you, Conrad. Reef, we're going to have you come. Thank you for what you're going to share with us. These are a few words from our family, including Sarah and Phil, who could not be here in person today. There is not enough words or time to describe how incredible of a man that Grandpa and Dad was. He was our hero. He inspired us to be brave, motivated us to look on the bright side, and always encouraged to treat ourselves by having an extra helping of Grandma's Mickey Mouse waffles. He lived an extraordinary life and treated everyone he met with exceptional kindness. It's heartbreaking to know that we will never play another card game in Harrison with him or listen to one of his stories over a glass of wine. But these memories will be forever cherished and never forgotten. We are so proud and extremely lucky to have him as our dad and grandpa. Although he may be gone, our love for him will last forever. Thank you. I'd like to start off with a couple of words to the young folks here, just so that you remember or that you know that you can have anything you want in life, but you have to earn it. Or should I say, pay for it. If you're going to pay it, there's a price, whether it's time or money or effort, but you can have anything you want in life as long as you're willing to commit to it. And that would be what Bert Fisher taught me. He's a person that never quit. Never gave up. 
He knew the price of everything. Before I met Susan, I decided I would like to have a successful relationship. And so my first step was to meet the mother because that is who I would be marrying in 20 years down the road, I thought. <laughs> meet the mother. <laughs> I said, I wanted to meet the mother. You're the reason I married Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I realize that her dad was every bit as important as her mother. And I have over 40 years to thank Bert and Margaret for as a result. Bert was always there for his family, always willing to lend a hand, always willing to give good advice or help in some other way. And so at some point in time, he became the family role model. And we all tried to live up to his standards, to behave in a way that was acceptable. Bert created a fine family to be a part of. So on behalf of Bert and Margaret, I would like to thank everyone that is here today for coming out to honor the passing of this fine man. Your presence is appreciated. All the best for 2023. Good advice. For those unmarried yet, do visit the parents first. <laughs> Carbon copy, 20 years later. We could, we could spend all day. We'd hear the same stories. Certain standards set, values maintained, good morals, happy disposition. And again, out of Bert's experience, we will never forget the sound of a tank rumbling through your town. Yeah. It would send shivers. Could have been bitter. <clears throat> he wasn't. He decided that his life would be a protective shield from all that which could have made him bitter. And he would make sure that his children, grandchildren, etc., would live in such a better place than what he was, no fault of anyone, but what he was raised in. Turmoil and anger and destruction and death. Bolt snaps off, <clears throat> right, Rick and Conrad, and your dad laughs. Ha <laughs> ha, I've seen, I've seen way worse. This is easy. <laughs> yeah. You want, you want trouble? I'll tell you a story of trouble. <laughs> now, this is easy. And I've heard that story from dad's generation, male, female. You think this is tough? I've been through tough. His experiences define him, mold him, and yet it can go for wrong, but he just drives for the right and the beauty of life for his family. Bert, well done. He would have heard that on the other side. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. There will be some sort of, uh, I don't know, medal maybe placed on dad's lapel on the other side. And it'll just be... It'll be, I survived, and maybe on the bottom, it won't say not the war. I survived the bitterness that could come from war. I survived that. And how did he get there, Paul? He earned it. No one gave him that. He had to decide and then earn it. And that's the other thing about this generation. If you wanted it, you saved, and then you bought it cash. That's just how you did it. There was no credit cards back in his day. If you wanted love, you had to grow it. You had to till the soil, foster it. If you wanted respect, you earned it by teaching your boys what respect looks like. That's him. That's why we, we do everything we can to celebrate, and it would take weeks to complete the action. So for family, what do you do? Well, you move forward and you always celebrate his good name. You bring him into conversation. 
at Christmas is, picture of him, candle lit, and you speak of him. And the other thing you do is you take care of mom now. The other side of the coin, take care of mom. Because if dad was here, if Bert was here, he'd take care of Margaret. You step into that void. To everyone that came from the village or from uh, neighbors past, friends, family, thank you for coming today. God bless. We're going to make our way now, transition to the graveside service in which this family will do its absolute total duty of bringing him across the finish line, laying him to rest. Then we come back to the reception. Now, for those that wish to just go to reception elements, it's a ways. Feel free. Pour, they'll pour you a coffee or tea, sit around the tables, fellowship. We'll be coming back soon once family arrives. Then full reception elements will be displayed. I'm going to say grace, but we're going to do it together as the Our Father of the Lord's Prayer. Speaks of provision. Bert always provided. Speaks of protection. God protected his family through those difficult war years. Then he learned to protect the interests of those he loved. Three is forgiveness. As Margaret would probably say, forgiveness, ah, I trained him early, you know. But you can't be married as long as they were without it. It's in there. Plus, there's grace attached to the Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being with us. For those joining us at the graveside, please just follow behind the coach. We'll make our way down. Those that wish just to stay in the reception room, make your way there, pour yourself a coffee and wait. We're coming back. But to all of you, Happy New Year. May 2023 allow you to always honor. But may it be a good year for us as we continue to make our way through the mid or endemic of what we realized for two years. Blessings to you. Amen.
They got amazing things in there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see this one?